you got to be wondering, Matt, how are we going to take care of this area right here? Well, Bondo. James Bondo. It's getting hot in here. Instead of taking off all my clothes, which we'll explore later in the video, I think we're just going to replace the blower resistor on our 1995 Ford F-150. But it was weird, so let's talk about that. When you turn the fan speed on your HVAC controls, well, high is, high is legit. Like, it's just sending 12 volts, got a ground probably somewhere in the system, and you're getting full speed, full frontal, all the time, 24-7, 911 action. But when you go to low, low, medium, medium, well, something crazy happens in this little guy. Basically, you're getting all, well, you're not getting all, you're getting voltage, it's not, it goes through these resistance coils and less happens. That's a, clear as mud. So if one of the positions on your fan switch doesn't work, go ahead and pop this little guy out and take a Ganderino at it. You're looking for broken coils, damaged or bent or like deformed coils, and you're also looking at the connections on the back side of this and in the female socket of the wiring harness. Your blower motor resistor is located on the HVAC unit under the hood. Kind of tucked away under the AC accumulator, but it's got two 8mm headed screws and then it just basically falls off. And don't drop those screws on the ground. And you know what? Make your own story. Drop the screws on the ground. Drive over them. Pop a tire. That's never happened to me before. Never. And while I don't like myself for this, I kind of like throwing parts at things and seeing what sticks. The fan switch, it's probably not our issue here. This little guy is notorious for going bad. 250,000 miles on this thing. It's got some seat time. I wasn't too worried about throwing a part at this, so I like to cut these little tabs off to make pulling the harness off a lot easier. That way, you also don't rip that plastic apart and you get to buy a new harness pigtail. But if you look deep inside my body here, you know, the area that usually gets plugged, you'll see that this could have actually used a new harness. And you can see the lack of center pin action there in the center and also some hot spider action off to the side. Well, it's probably the reason low doesn't work. So we got a new Motocraft one, I'm gonna throw it in there. It took a little bit of didgeridooing with this pick tool and these uh, cutters that I've turned into pliers, well, they'll never be the same. But we got that pin out of the harness. I went ahead and wire wheeled everything and slammed a whole bunch of brake cleaner through those contacts to try to break up all that rust and corrosion. Now that we've got our Ford wiring harness looking, you know, fairly tolerable, I'm gonna top it off with a dollop of dielectric grease. I like to take this guy, splooge in, in all the connectors, then take a dollop on my finger and wheel bearing style, pack it in there. And now that you've got your harness all lubed up and ready to go, I bet you're ready to slam it in some holes. <laughs> Classic you. I actually like to throw a little bit of RTV around the outside around the outside, like two trailer park girls. From Eminem, the song about two trailer park girls around the out, doesn't matter. This step is 100% not necessary. I got three reasons why. A, if your threads don't look so good, well, you're basically gluing it in there. And also, A, this engine's exhaust, well, it smells like Bigfoot stick. Anything I do to keep that dick out of my nose, well, I'll do. Now that you've got it bolted back in there, Go ahead and throw in your harness. I like to put the harness in last because, you know, you're fighting with it in an area you're already unhappy about being in. So just do that later. Well, do it now. You gotta, if you want this to work, plug it back in. And now we have fully functional HVAC fan controls. Wait, why the hell is that loose now? God damn it. Perfect day. It's going to be 106-ish. It's going to be super cool to have the low speed of the fan working. But, um, well... I can go inside, bounce a bush light with the boys. Well, that's not true. Go inside, bounce some white claws by myself in the bathroom. It's more like it. Sounds nice, actually. But since I got you here, let's do some updates on our other projects. So our 63 Buick LS swap. Well, this little guy is working better as a table than it is a car right now. And here's my biggest complaint with Rock Auto. You and I subsidize their logistics department. This is one project, five parts four boxes, comes from four different warehouses. Starting to make me wonder if they're actually like a big company or it's like 12 dudes living across the United States and they're like, hey Brent, some idiot oil to coil, send them out from your basement. But that is enough about Rock Auto and their seductive ways. This is where I store my vacuum, welding helmet, bug spray. We're sound deadening the trunk of our 63 Riviera and, well, we got a whole series of testing of what sound deadener works best in what areas and yada, yada, yada. 
my ADHD kind of set in and decided to paint the trunk lid black. Well, the back side, not the top. Well, I haven't checked the top. We should probably check the top. Uh, with just some bed liner. That makes it look better, and I don't actually have to do any body work because I'm kind of lazy. We're putting sound deadener all around here, but I had the hankering in the back of my head that a lot of rattles actually come from this whole structure moving around and vibrating. Who is it? Come in. So I wanted to do both videos at the same time, and I just kind of got distracted. I'll do it. Give me like a month or four. I'll get to it. Oh, get out of there. Okay. Which leads us to our 1969 VW Beetle. Got a little extra fiber in it with the LS swap. The story goes that we ended up with a wrecked and then ironically flooded C5 Corvette. Unfortunately, the flooding part of that, well, it didn't work out. Who could have imagined? Who could have seen that coming? Not me. The transaxle, the torque tube, and the T56 transmission, they all ended up working fine, but the engine, it was just, uh, nope, not gonna work. Bought a truck motor, 5.3, slammed it in there. Well, it works, it does run. Now I gotta fix and finish all the carnage of hacks on this some bitch in there. And while you should be basking in the greatness that is my cooling solution, which is basically just a random radiator I found on eBay and zip ties, well, it's gotta do better. Somehow, this setup actually keeps this car cool when it's wandering around my field of dreams. That's the area where project cars <laughs> and dreams go to die in the grass next to the garage. But I have to find a real solution for keeping this thing cool and street driving. We're gonna have fun hiding a radiator, or radiators, just keep adding radiators until it cools. That's, that's one way of doing it. To try to make this car look factory, first glance. AKA, low expectations. Basically just not hanging down like that. That's it. Fight around all those wires. God damn it, what the hell was that? It's like a cougar came out of the woodwork attacked me. I don't necessarily like shotgun and parts of things. I do it. Because you'll get inside and realize, well, none of it works. Then you'll come back outside and realize you're an idiot. That's what I do every, every day. Sometimes I don't even have to go back outside. I just sit there on the couch and realize I'm stupid. 